a small traditional town in eastern Nigeria, nestled amidst rolling green hills and thick forests. The town, known for its deep-rooted customs and strong community ties, is a place where everyone knows everyone. Nneka was the epitome of grace and beauty. With her slender frame, smooth dark skin that gleamed under the sun, and a smile that could light up the darkest of nights. She was the daughter of a well-respected family, and at the age of 22, she was the pride of her community. People often whispered about her, not just because of her beauty, but also because she was reticent, always lost in thought, and kept to herself more than others her age. Her parents, Chief and Lolo Okoro, were beginning to worry. While many of Neka's friends were already married or betrothed, no man had come forward to ask for her hand in marriage. This puzzled everyone, for she was not just beautiful, but also kind-hearted and intelligent. One day, during a festive gathering, a young man named Emeka, who had just returned from the city, laid eyes on Ineka. He was smitten instantly. Over the next few weeks, he made his intentions clear, visiting her family and showing a deep interest in Ineka. For the first time in a long while, Ineka seemed to warm up to someone, and her parents were overjoyed. The traditional marriage was set. The town buzzed with excitement as preparations began. On the night before the wedding, however, Ineka confided in her mother, Lolo Okoro, a secret she had kept hidden for years. Mama, she began, her voice trembling. I don't know how to say this, but there's something wrong with me. Something I've never told anyone. She paused, tears welling up in her eyes. What is it, my daughter? You can tell me anything, her mother replied, concern edged on her face. Mama, I don't have a vagina. I've never had one. I was born this way, but I didn't know how to tell you or anyone else. I'm scared, Mama. What will happen when a maker finds out? Lolo Okoro was speechless. She had never heard of such a thing before, and her mind raised with fear and confusion. We will see the village healer, she finally said, her voice shaky. Perhaps there is a way to, to, to help you. The healer, a wise old woman with grey hair and piercing eyes, listened to Neka's story. She examined Neka carefully and sat in silence for what felt like an eternity. Neka, she finally said, you were born different, but this does not mean you are any less of a woman. Your spirit is strong and your heart is pure, but I must warn you, this path you are on will not be easy. The healer explained that Ineka's condition was rare and that there was no way to create what she was missing. She also cautioned that if Emeka found out, it could lead to scandal, shame and possibly the annulment of the marriage. Despite this, Ineka decided to proceed with the marriage, hoping that her love for Emeka would be enough, that somehow they could find happiness despite her condition. The wedding was grand with music, dancing and feasting. Ineka and Emeka seemed like the perfect couple, but a dark cloud loomed over their happiness. On their wedding night, as the couple retired to their room, Emeka's excitement quickly turned into confusion and then anger when he discovered the truth. Why didn't you tell me? He shouted, his voice laced with hurt and betrayal. How could you hide something like this? Ineka's heart broke as she saw the pain in Emeka's eyes. I was scared, she whispered, tears streaming down her face. I love you, Emeka. I didn't want to lose you. Emeka stormed out, leaving Ineka sobbing in their room. The next day, rumors spread like wildfire throughout the town. Emeka had told his friends, and soon everyone knew about Neka's secrets. The once admired beauty became the subject of queer gossip, and people began to avoid her family. The pain was unbearable. Neka felt trapped, betrayed, and alone. She locked herself away, refusing to eat or speak to anyone. Her parents tried to comfort her, but the shame and pity in their eyes only deepened her despair. This turned into weeks, and Ineka fell into a deep depression. But then, something unexpected happened. A letter arrived, addressed to Ineka from Emeka. It was filled with apologies and regret. He admitted that he had reacted out of shock and anger, but that he still loved her and wanted to make things work. He asked her for forgiveness and begged her 
to meet him so they could talk. With trembling hands, Ineka agreed to meet him. They sat under the big Iroko tree where they first met, and Emeka poured out his heart. He had spoken to doctors in the city who specialized in rare conditions. And though they couldn't change her, they offered counseling and therapy to help them both cope. I don't care what people say, Emeka said, holding her hands tightly. I love you, Ineka. I want to be with you, no matter what. Ineka looked into his eyes, searching for any sign of doubt, but all she saw was love. She realized then that her fears had almost robbed her of the one thing she had always longed for, acceptance. Together, they faced the town's judgment, standing strong against the whispers and stares. Over time, people's attitudes softened as they saw the love and commitment between Ineka and Emeka. Their story became a lesson in true love and acceptance, proving that even in the face of adversity, love could conquer all. True love isn't about perfection, it's about acceptance. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment, and share if you found this story moving. Until next time, thank you and stay blessed.